In order to get a full report on how our learners are doing with their training, we'll go to the Reports tab. There are several different reporting options similar to the other tabs in the system. You can click Add Remove Columns to capture all of the data that you want and just pull those columns into the view. Wherever those white arrows appear is where the column will go. You can also view summary information by grouping by certain columns. To do this, just click and hold on a column heading and drag it up slightly into where it says drag a column header here to group by that column. You'll see two arrows where the column will go. You'll notice once you place the column header there that everything will group by that column heading. In the Filter Options section, you can select a group in this first dropdown. The second dropdown will dictate whether you only show active users, deactivated users, or both in your report. The Filter By dropdown will let you filter by dates. I can filter by activation date, assigned date, completed date, and due date. I'm going to select activation date. Once you select a date to filter by, the date range dropdowns will appear. You can select a custom date range or choose one of our default ranges. I'm going to select in the past so that I only see assignments that are active right now for my users to take and not any that are scheduled for the future. Once I select Apply Changes, this report will show me any assignment that is currently active or has been active in the past. From here I can select the drop-down on Lesson Status to only show me assignments that are incomplete or not attempted, and click OK. This report is now showing me any assignment that is currently active and not complete. You can manually build any report using these functions or you can start by using one of the default reports that we've created for you. You can view these by clicking on the Saved Reports drop-down. Keep in mind selecting a saved report, even our default reports, will override any other filter options you previously selected on the grid or in the Filter Options section. I'll go ahead and select the All Completed report. This report will now show me all assignments that have been completed for the life of the account. As you can see, the saved report has overridden the options we previously had in the Filter Options section. It now is looking for any assignment where the completed date is in the past. If I change this to Previous Month and click Apply Changes, the report will then only show me assignments that were completed in the previous month. The All Not Completed and All Overdue reports work in a similar way to the All Completed report. The All Not Completed report will pull in any assignment that is not completed. Keep in mind this also includes any future assignments, so you may want to set a date range as well. The All Overdue report will pull any assignment that is not completed and has a due date in the past. The final default report is called Compliance. This report will display information in a summarized manner. The default report groups users by login, but you can group by any custom field. For example, I'm going to pull location into the grid and then group by that column. So I'll pull login back down and pull location up. In this grouping you'll now see a few metrics. Total minutes represents the total number of minutes that were spent training for that particular group. The next metric is assigned. This represents how many courses are currently assigned to users in that grouping. Completed represents how many courses are completed. The last metric is Compliance. This number takes the completed number and divides it by the total number of completed and assigned courses, giving you a compliance percentage. But what if I want this report emailed to me on a regular basis without me having to log in every time? No problem. I'll just click Save As. And I'll name the report Compliance Report by location and click Create Report. Once the report is saved, I have a few more options. By default, the reports you make are private. However, if you have created a report that will be useful for your other admins, you can check this box to have the report made public for other users to access. Now to have the report emailed to me, all I have to do is click the checkbox to schedule this report to be automatically emailed to me. Then I can select the first of every month, the first and fifteenth of every month, 
or weekly on every and then select a day of the week that I would like the report to be emailed. Once I have my settings the way I want, I just click Save. And I will get this report exactly like I formatted it, sent to me at the interval I selected so I can easily track all of my employees. Another report in this tab is the Compliance Report. This report views the data slightly differently than the compliance report on the main report. As you can see, each row is for one user. This report will list all of your users and tell you how many courses are assigned to each user, how many they've completed, and if the user is compliant. What that means is if they have completed everything that is currently active. This report defaults to show any course that is currently active. If you'd rather look at the data from a different perspective, you can change the date filters at the top. So let's say you wanted to view the date by how many courses are outstanding that are due at the end of the month. You just select due date instead of activation date and then select the date range you want. So if I select from August 1st to September 30th and click apply changes. The system will total the number of assignments for each column on the bottom row and then tell you how many of your users are compliant. If you'd rather view compliance based on the number of courses rather than the number of users, just simply use the compliance report on the main report. Additionally, if you sort by group, the system will also give you a compliance percentage for each group. The last report you can view is the training history import report. Now let's say your company has been using another online training system or even an in-person paper system for years and you want to have that information stored in the Safety Skills LMS. This is the page to import that information. As the owner, you dictate what columns are visible on this page. We default to these four fields, but you can delete all of them or add to them or just use what we have. It's really up to you. To add a column, just type in what you need. So we'll type job title and then click add. Now job title is added to the view. Once all of your columns are how you want them, you'll need to fill out your previous training history on an Excel spreadsheet with matching column headings. You'll save that document as a CSV like we did earlier for our learner upload, and then you can upload it here. Once you've uploaded that, all of that information will appear down in the grid and these fields are searchable. You can filter the data as needed and then export as needed. These reports will not integrate with our online training on the Reports tab. The purpose of this report is really to store previous information. Ideally, this will be a one-time upload of data and serve as a single location that all of your admins can go to to search previous training records as needed.